Shalom everyone. Welcome to another vlog by Danny the Digger. And this time people, this is going to be a really exciting one. This is maybe the most significant presentation in my series of following Jesus in Jerusalem. And boy, did it take me a while to finally get to film here. On my first attempt, it turned out that I didn't have the permission. By the time I got the permission, I got COVID. In fact, this is the first day I'm out of bed. Out of, I'm out of quarantine. You might still hear it in my voice. On top of it, I also finally managed to get a solution to the sound. Yes, I'm working for the first time with this wireless mic. I hope the sound is coming out pretty good despite my voice because this is such an important presentation. People, it's not me just saying this. The archaeologists who dug here in the 1970s already speculated with the possibility that this is the very place where Jesus was interrogated by the high priest. Not this very spot, but just around the corner. Yes, this will not be mentioned in any guidebooks, in any archaeological report. It is like an oral tradition that was played with by the archaeological team working here in the 1970s and when I started inquiring about this, I couldn't believe it that they never mentioned it in writing. And so here I am now to finally correct that, present that to you, the very possibility of the site of the interrogation of Jesus by Caiaphas and the Sanhedrin. Unbelievable. But what leads me to this conclusion? As usual, it's all in the details. It's all in the archaeological record. And let's start with, indeed, the small details. Okay, first of all, we are beneath the Jewish quarter right now. This is a site that was excavated in the 1970s after the Six-Day War when Israel returned to the Jewish quarter, found it in total destruction, and before rebuilding it, excavations were carried out. These are images of the excavations of this specific area which was given the nickname the burnt house and it was given for a good reason because this is the basement of a house that was found all in ruins you can see these replicas or maybe even the original they look like replicas of the burnt wood of the upper floor that burned and collapsed into the basement and yet it is the small finds that lead me to suggest that all of this could be connected to the high priest. First of all, this house contained a lot of wealth. We know so because we have here glass. Glass, and especially blown glass, was just invented around that time. Perhaps, in fact, it was invented here in Jerusalem in the first century. But this is not a vlog about glass. This is for a very specific topic. And glass is just one medium to show the prosperity of this house. But more than imported pottery, more than glass, this family also had power. The power is attested through A, the discovery of an inkwell. Inkwells are not a common find. When you excavate a site from the first century, you will find a lot of oil lamps. You will find cooking pots for making chicken soup. But an inkwell is a different story. It means that this family had scribal activity going in it. They were in charge of certain documents, but they were in charge of much more, as you learned from this. This, people, is a mold to mint coins. Here are some of the coins that may have come from this specific mold. And molding, making coins, that's already power that you have only to the regime. So this family, maybe it's not the king. I think that King Herod's palace was next to the Tower of David of today, but it did have power, and we know its name. This stone was found, which is like several weight stones presented over here. But this specific one also had a name on it. Kind of hard to read it. Above it reads Bar. B-R, son of, in Aramaic version. And on the le next line beneath it, Katros. Katros. Now, uh, just a few years ago, another stone like this was found with the full reading of the first line, Nidbarei. 
The meaning of that word is a bit obscure, but Katos, we know who it is. The Katos family was one of the wealthiest priestly families of Jerusalem. Members of that family were high priests, and they were actually reputed in quite a negative way, according to the Mishnah. They are presented as crooks, as powerful, corrupted priests. Evidence that they are priests can also be deduced from these stone pots. Such stone pots were used to uh, uh, contain the purity, to maintain the impurity at all times. Okay, so all of these items came from the basement that was found here. And now, when you look at it again, it is tempting to suggest to connect this also to the temple's activity. First of all, you have these big stone objects that are also made deliberately to retain the purity. In fact, such stone uh, bowls, not bowls, jars, are mentioned in the Gospels. In the famous story of Jesus turning water into wine, it says that the water was kept in six stone pots that were used by the Jews according to their purity laws. In addition to this, I must also mark the fact that you have here items for grinding. Now, in the back, you have what looks like an oven. Same thing over here. So maybe this was just to spice up the pita bread that they were making. But you also have smaller ones here. And if you're suggesting that this was a family of priests, then maybe, just maybe, this family of priests, of high priests, was also making here the cocktail for the burning on the altar inside the temple. Not the animal sacrifice on the outside, but the incense that was burnt on the inside. This is all very fascinating, but I argued to go beyond it. I argued that this stone and the second stone that was found nearby by Dr. Godfield argues that this is a specific home of a specific family, the family of Katos. And then some scholars, two reputed scholars like Benzion Rosenfeld and, Dan and Professor Schwartz, they argue that the Katos family were related to Caiaphas. In fact, Daniel Schwartz even argues that Elionaios Tikitairos, one of the high priests, was the brother of Caiaphas. Okay, now let me go out to the street and present to you the most I can of the neighbor's mansion. If this was the property of the Katos family, it makes sense that the relatives, also family of the high priest of Caiaphas, may have resided just around the corner. And guess what? In the 1970s excavations, we also found a property that is buried today beneath this building. Okay, here you can see the restoration work in process for the big size Tiferet Israel synagogue. In fact, they're installing right now the dome. This is what it's going to look like. Okay. And Oren Gottfeld, my friend, my colleague, he has excavated all the way down to bedrock where he uncovered another stone inscribed, Katos. Meaning I'm walking on top of more parts of the mansion of the Katos family. On the street level today, you can see here remains from the time of the Crusaders. This may have been a market. This is some nice Jewish rabbinical music you're hearing there in the back, I hope. But we are here today for a different purpose. Okay, follow me as we go beneath the layer over here. This is another, even bigger size area excavated in the 1970s, where again, the first century remains were uncovered. But this property was yeah, much so bigger. Alan, Alan. This property was much bigger. And unfortunately, we did not find 
any inscribed material to suggest the name of the family that lived next door to the Katos. Now, I really, really wanted to take you into the site to film there. Unfortunately, due to security reasons, it turned out that it's going to be shut down for two years till they resolve some major security issue. But checking out the location, it turned out that the exit still enables us to view the interior, which is like divine intervention because it's tilted up inside and that's exactly what I want to show you. This is another first century bigger mansion than the Katos family and there in the middle of that big mansion you know what you have there inside there you have a 600 square meter big hall whose walls are beautifully decorated in the first Pompeian style and it's a place not just for, not just for living the living areas the bedrooms are around it that hall is for convening that hall enables about a hundred people to sit together and when I was doing my own research on where could be the interrogation site of Jesus by the high priest and the Sanhedrin all of a sudden it hit me hey this is home of priests maybe this was the place and then the further research realizing the next door neighbor was his brother led me to conclude oh my god I may have discovered the real site of the interrogation of Jesus. And when I asked Hillel Geva, a veteran archaeologist who was a young student when this was dug, he told me, yeah, Danny, we played with that idea, but we decided to let it go. We didn't want the Christians to turn this into a giant church. I couldn't believe my eyes. I could not believe what I was hearing. And I cannot believe the fact that I can't get in to show you the interior. But it's there, and in two years, I hope it will open again. And yes, people, forget all the traditions. Petus in Galicanto, the Armenians claim. They're all, you know, I, I presented them. They have their pros and cons. This site is based purely on archaeology, rational thinking, and as a lawyer would present this case in, the, in court, the circumstantial evidence is overwhelming. It's overwhelming. The possibility that this is where Jesus was interrogated just makes so much sense. And moreover, you see that corner where it's lit up? Beneath it, there is an underground cistern. Just like the Catholics argue that in the Petos in Galicanto complex there is an underground cistern where Jesus could have been locked up, he could have been locked up in one of those cisterns just the same before handed over for Pilatus for judgment okay so I hope you've enjoyed this short but very significant review in my opinion and the next one is going to be well the trial of Jesus so so long for now this was very exciting I'm so happy to have managed to get to deliver this speech especially after feeling so bad after the COVID but there's when there's a will there is a way and I'm still working with low means I thank all of those who have supported me so far. If you care to keep supporting me so I can keep doing these interesting presentations, show me some PayPal love. Thank you all so much. God bless you. Leet out.